Good morning and welcome back to Planet Alt History. Today we are going to discuss what if Czechoslovakia collapsed like Yugoslavia. How and when did Czechoslovakia cease to exist? Czechoslovakia didn't split immediately after the Cold War. It took them some time to figure out where they would stand in this new world order after the fall of communism. Internal issues were also very important to them because after the fall of communism, nationalism began to see a renaissance in Eastern Europe. When Czechoslovakia dropped the name socialist in their country's name, most people would think that Czechoslovakia would become the Czechoslovak Republic. However, Slovak politicians were not happy with it and wanted Czecho minus Slovak to be written separately with a hyphen. Thus the name hyphen war. There was no referendum, there was no war between the two sides and in November 1992 Czechoslovakia decided it would be dissolved. In 1993, Czechia and Slovakia gained their independence peacefully. Yugoslavia was a different story. Yugoslavia had the issue that they had many more nationalities compared to Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia, they had Czechs, Slovaks and still a very considerable Hungarian minority to this day. Yugoslavia, they had Serbs, Croatians, Slovenes, Bosniaks, Albanian, Macedonians and many more groups which sometimes are counted separately or together with another important group. Tito, he was a man who held everything basically together, while in Czechoslovakia people didn't have a strongman figure, and whenever someone wanted to do their own thing, <laughs> the Soviets, they just intervened. The mentality was also very different, if you believe in that sort of things. It is also said that the Czechs are more relaxed and even passive sometimes, while Let's uh, say the Serbs, the Croats or the Albanians, they are more passionate if they really want to defend something. Let's also not forget the Banish decrees. Yugoslavia after World War II could not just remove unwanted populations, as they were all victims from the Nazi invasion, in one form or another. Czechoslovakia used to have a huge German minority, and due to the political circumstances, many Germans and even some Hungarians, they were removed due to the Banish decrees. One part of Czechoslovakia called Ruthenia, with many Ruthenian people or Ukrainians, they were annexed by the USSR and a policy of Ukrainization was launched in there. As a result, Czechoslovakia was more homogeneous as compared to Yugoslavia. But what if all of that changed? What if Czechoslovakia collapsed like Yugoslavia? Let's just say that the Banish decrees, they never happened or never entered in force, either because Banish would not be supported by the Allies anymore as president of Czechoslovakia or because the Soviets would install communism much quicker than in OTL. The arguments against displacing the Germans and Hungarians would have been that Germany and Hungary don't have enough capacities to welcome potential refugees, and also because many of these people would hold important jobs, or have important degrees, or have important knowledge which would be essential for the running of the economy in Czechoslovakia. Instead, we would see a stronger Czechoslovakization happening. The Czechoslovak identity would be expanded upon and differences between Czechs and Slovaks they would be blamed on imperialist forces from Germany, Austria and Hungary as well as religion. It would really fit into this communist agenda. Now that they are all finally living in socialism and that religion would not be that important and that imperialism would finally be removed, they could finally become truly one again. A huge narrative would be made and some people would be relocated here and there, but at the end Czechoslovakia would remain very divided. Due to the communist influence, however, people would not dare to speak up, and most of the history would continue in a similar fashion as in OTL. 
However, if we would analyze this alternate society, we would quickly find out that the Germans would sometimes be discriminated, as well as some Hungarians. There would be huge pressure on the minorities to speak Czechoslovak and to denounce Nazism and fascism. People in general could be more aggressive even towards each other and so more nationalistic or revanchistic minded people. They could think that the Germans and Hungarians went unpunished. Poles and Ruthenian people, they would be largely left alone as they would not be seen as a big threat. As a result, these two minorities would be somewhat stronger in here as compared to OTL. Czechoslovakization would be somewhat successful and the Germans and Hungarians would be sometimes played out against each other. Sometimes the Czechs would do the same even with the Slovaks against other minorities, if it would be to their advantage. This means that after the end of the Cold War, someone different than Václav Klaus would become president in Czechoslovakia. We may see the rise of nationalism not only from Czechs, but especially from the Slovaks, from the Germans, the Hungarians. And with that, we would see a chain reaction, where the Poles and the Ruthenians, they would also follow suit. The mentality would be very different, times would be very chaotic, everyone was played out against each other, and there are even more nationalities in one country. In this timeline, Slovaks, they would want to declare independence way earlier, and this could be completely opposed by the Czechs. Prague would send an ultimatum asking Slovakia to reconsider their decision in a very polite way, or they would bring back order to Slovakia. It would fall on deaf ears, and the Czechoslovak wars they would start. Why would the Czechs invade Slovakia this time around? Is it just because of nationalism? No. In this timeline, remember, the Czechoslovak identity would be very different. The Czechs, they would see themselves as Czechoslovaks, and with the Slovaks gun, it would mean that there would be no unity against the Germans and the Hungarians to a lesser extent. The Czechs, they would have the fear of becoming a minority in their own country and face a German invasion once more. Only that without Slovakia, they would be seriously weakened, internally and externally. What's up guys? Sorry for the little interruption, but I'm sure you have noticed that on my channel I have many videos that are scheduled for like one week, two weeks, or even three weeks. If you are really impatient, if you can really not hold yourself, and if you really must see these videos, Please subscribe on my Patreon, there are various options which you can take. I'm sure you will find the most adequate option for yourself. And also please go down, check the links below for my Facebook page and also for my TikTok as well as for my Twitter account. And now let's go back to the alternate history video. A quick move towards Bratislava would be made, but halted due to the resistance that would come from Slovak soldiers or civilians who would oppose the ultimatum of Prague. The Germans, they would at first remain very cautious for very obvious reasons. I mean, just some 60 years ago, there was a war, right? And uh, also because of the German unity later on, many extremist forces, they would try to take over some villages, municipalities, cities, etc. Especially because the Czechs, they would have been busy fighting the Slovaks. The Germans would also get many neo-Nazi terrorist fighters joining them due to the rise of neo-Nazism in the early 90s in Germany. In a desperate attempt to get Slovakia back, Prague would propose to the Hungarians more autonomy and the Hungarians they would rise up as well. The Hungarians they would be very quick to make some gains against the Slovaks and the Czechs they could advance a little bit more. The Germans would have a slight advantage in here because most of the industry would be on their side. The Czechs they would play defensive against the Slovaks while making smaller offensives against the Germans. At this point, Poles and Ruthenians they would also probably fight or demand an annexation, maybe by Poland for instance, but Poland would just utterly refuse it. And Ruthenians they could demand more autonomy. 
Prague could then deal with the Poles and give them a Polish autonomous zone around Zaolsia and Tashkicheshin. Ruthenians, they would be difficult to fight because the Slovaks were very busy with the Czechs, they had the Hungarians, and the terrain where the Ruthenians live is also too harsh in there. The Ruthenians, they would thus make very big advantages of it and make considerable gains despite their small size. Some Ukrainians, they may even assist them and a few supporters would demand annexations by Ukraine or even the most extremist cases, they would ask for an independent Ruthenia, which would never happen even in this alternate timeline. I believe that the Czechs would at some point get very angry and play dirty against the Germans and some massacres they would happen on both sides. Germany, unable to really intervene, would probably ask NATO on what to do. And we may see NATO forces or even UN forces enter the former Czechoslovak Republic. It would be an undeniable fact that Czechoslovakia would just not be able to exist any longer. Hungary may assist the Hungarians in Slovakia as well to some extent, and the Hungarians would be able to get autonomy officially from Prague, keep the Slovaks at check and have a strong position for negotiations. The loser in here would clearly be the Czechs. Many young Czechs, they would die, fighting their own former compatriots and the whole generation would be lost. The Germans would not be able to get independence and untruths would be a taboo. But they would win autonomy, just like the Polish minority. Slovakia would gain independence, but the war would partially continue between the Ruthenians and Hungarians. The Ruthenians, they could then agree on autonomy, while Slovaks and Hungarians, they would have a ceasefire agreement with each other. Sometime later, as with Kosovo, we may see a second independent Hungarian state arise, Falvidek. Some UN members, they may recognize it and others, they would just not recognize it for political reasons. At the end, everyone would lose somehow. Because annexations, they would be taboo after the Cold War. Autonomy would not really be enough for the Germans. The Czechs would have lost a lot of power. The Poles in Zaosia would still be in another country than Poland. The Hungarians in Slovakia would now be in an unrecognized country. Slovakia would have lost almost one third of what they claimed to be theirs. And the Ruthenians, they would still remain irrelevant. Czechia would become almost a paria state for some time. And Slovakia would take a lot of time to rebuild themselves as well. The former Czechoslovak Republic would remain much poorer than in OTL and more prone to instability. Czechia or even Slovakia may become pro-Russian, kind of like Serbia, and Czechia would find in Serbia someone close to them, someone with whom they could identify. These two countries, they would become the strongest allies of Russia in this alternate timeline and pose a strategic problem in case if NATO would expand. Czechia and Slovakia would also not be able to join the EU soon, because Czechia would not want to join, and Slovakia for the territorial disputes they would have with Falvidek. And that's where we leave it for now. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon, and join my forum, forum.planetalthistory.ga. Until next time, on Planet Alt History.